Wonder Woman 84, Black Widow, Top Gun, Quiet Place 2, anything? The pandemic has closed our opportunity to go watch movies at movie theaters, and all of our summer blockbusters are no longer here. Uh, those tent poles of the studios, well, they're either being put on the shelf or put on video on demand. Uh, so what is the state of Hollywood? How are movies going to survive? Are we going to be launching movies strictly from home now? Are movie theaters such as Cinemark and AMC and Regal going to be able to survive this pandemic with them being closed this long? We'll be asking these questions and more with Sharon Waxman, the founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief of The Wrap a news organization, one of the premier news organizations in Hollywood covering the entertainment industry. Fellas, welcome to an episode of Film Nation. This time, a conversation about film. All right, guys, welcome to our guest, uh, Sharon Waxman. Sharon is an award-winning journalist. She started off her career with the Washington Post and New York Times before she founded, uh, in 2009, The Wrap, uh, which is one of Hollywood's greatest reporting uh, magazines and online blogs. Uh, Sharon, thank you so much for being a part of our class today. Well, thanks for asking me. So. Uh, in 1975, Steven Spielberg changed the landscape of films with the release of Jaws, mm -hmm. uh, a, the summer blockbuster. We've now had 35 years of blockbusters, which the studios have called the summer blockbuster of a tent pole of a studio. Uh, this summer, we were supposed to have Black Widow, Wonder Woman, um, Ghostbusters, okay. all sorts of movies that folks were looking forward to, to seeing, and now mm -hmm. those are gone. Uh, what are studios doing to stay afloat during this kind of time without their tent poles? Well, it's not the studios whose finances and whose financial stability are at risk right now, really. It's the theaters. Yes. Uh, the theaters run on that revenue, right? So think about the studios and the theaters as partners in the movie exhibition business. And so if uh, Wonder Woman 2 comes out, roughly half the money will go to Warner Brothers, the studio that made it, and half the money will go to the theater that shows it, AMC, Cinemark, Regal, whatever. When there's no movies coming out, Cinemark, AMC, and Regal get zero dollars. When uh, the movie doesn't come out and, and they still have to pay for their real estate, they still have to maybe pay for staff who hasn't been furloughed maybe they got pp well they're too big to be to get ppp money so they're kind of out of luck the studios have a whole library of content that gives them a certain amount of ongoing revenue so you know rentals, uh, licenses on streaming platforms of old movies, you know, A Star is Born, whatever they had before. So they still have to carry the cost of making that, say, $200 million movie. They still have to, like, carry that cost on their books. But um, the decision then becomes a matter of doing the math. So do we wait to put that movie in theaters when theaters do open. And of course, this has been a incredibly difficult period of time for the, for the studios to figure out because, um, I mean, I, I got attacked for suggesting early on, we broke a story that I happened to write that Warner Brothers was considering putting Wonder Woman 1984 on streaming. That was anathema. What are you talking about? Chuck Rovin, the producer, called me. Gal Gadot's people, the you know the um, Patty Jenkins people called. They were like, nobody's ever talking. I'm like, yes, my story says the studio has not talked to the director or to the producer or to the. They're just talking about it internally, and that was true because at the beginning of this, um, and they turned out to be more right than wrong. They said, okay, well, we would definitely prefer to put this on a big screen. But what if there are, what if that becomes impossible? What if, do we just 
hold the movie indefinitely? And what would it look like if we put it out there on what we call paid VOD? So you guys all know what that is. You put it on iTunes, you put it on Amazon, or in this case, they could put it on HBO Max, which is their new streaming service, and they could charge you 20 bucks or 30 bucks if you wanted to download it and watch it and you'd have it for 20, 48 hours or whatever. And which is, of course, what Universal did with its Scooby-Doo movie. And um, now Disney has decided to do with Mulan. They put it on Disney+. Plus. So um, that's, that's the math. So the studios are, I would say they're strained financially, but it's not mm -hmm. like they're on the verge of bankruptcy. The theaters, on the other hand, right. they're in trouble. Which is... If a because AMC and Cinemark have both already shared their concerns of maybe not reopening and declaring bankruptcy if this yeah. continues to go on. And like in Louisville, we currently have one small independent theater uh, that is open right now. That's showing. Uh, I know we're going to show like space balls on this weekend kind of thing. That's but for the too. That sounds yeah. like <laughs> uh, But for the most part, you drive by these gigantic. Um, theater complexes with these huge empty parking lots. Uh, and it's yeah. been this way since March. Um, is our way of going to be able to watching movies, is that landscape going to change by next year where we might only be seeing movies on POVD and streaming services? I don't think so. Okay. What has happened and which I've been predicting for months and then said at the beginning of this pandemic what is known as the theatrical window which by which um i mean the amount the period of time where the theaters the big theaters get exclusive access to a movie before it goes to any streaming service or any other video what used to be video right. hey kids there were things called video stores and you would go and you would rent a video anyway um that period of time used to be about 90 days. That has been under pressure for years, especially with the rise of Netflix. And when the pandemic happened, I was like, it's done, it's dead, windows, as we call it, the debate over windows. Every year you'd go to Las Vegas where all the studios would come and all the theater companies would come and be like, what is gonna be the windows? They're negotiating, is it gonna be 60 days? Is it gonna be 30 days? Is it gonna be 45 days? Okay, it's done. Because at this point, it becomes an existential question for the studios. They are going to do what is good for their business. They like you, AMC theaters. We like you very much. But we can't exhibit our movies in your theater. So we're just not going to sit here and be sitting ducks for the benefit of your survival. We have to survive. So at the end of the day, that has been blown up. And AMC, which stupidly threatened to never show any more Universal movies after Universal decided that they had to put out one of their movies and it did very well. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what, why is it slipping my mind the name of the movie, but did like a hundred million dollars. Um, I can look it up, oh. I can Google it, but um, it was the first one. So it'll come to me in the middle of some other thought. So they have now come to an agreement for a, an 18 day window. I was like, are you joking? 18 days? We could have all been way further down the road to kind of figuring out a new ecosystem three years ago if you'd agreed to 18 days. Great. Everybody's going to do the same, even though there, I think some other changes came back. It's like, we're not going to make that agreement. And then all the studios are now trying to make that agreement with AMC, AMC being the biggest theater chain in the country. So what it says tends to be kind of the leader and people have to follow. But, um, so I, I don't, I think nobody wants to see theaters go away. It's a fantastic experience. It's a really fun way to see a movie. There's so many movies that, you know, are just more fun. Comedies, horror movies, particularly anything by Christopher Nolan, anything by James Cameron, right? The whatever Titanic or the new Avatar that's coming. You want to see that at like the highest possible resolution in a big dark room with amazing sound. Um, none of us want to see that go away. At, and so where I think we're going is we're going to a world in which a lot of movies will be seen primarily on streaming and some movies, fewer movies, will be reserved for, for, for the movie theater. 
So uh, yeah, like a movie like A Quiet Place, when it came out, because A Quiet Place 2 is supposed to be out this summer, you know. That's right. That was one of those films, when you were in a theater, and it was, as you said, dark, it's intense, it's a little bit of a horror film. Yeah, the, yeah. The, It was a movie that the sound was actually no sound. Right. Uh, and uh, that in the movie theater was drastically different versus when you watched it at home. It just, I mean, it just- Oh, it the dog's to... barking, somebody, one of the kids is slamming the door. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Um, now productions- Unless of course you been... have a private movie studio, th you know, in your home, which right. many people in the movie business do, but regular people do not. <laughs> do not, I just have a television, I pop. Um, now, <laughs> Productions have been put on hold right now, correct, mm -hmm. over in Hollywood. Uh, yep. Now, there are other countries in which Hollywood has ventured to, like Peter Jackson's uh, did his right. Lord of the Rings trilogy in New Zealand. Now, New Zealand shut themselves off to everyone. But there are other countries that are having success in managing the crisis. Are studios looking at saying, all right, we're just going to leave Hollywood for a while and venture to these other countries to get things running again? Well, first of all, Hollywood's been doing that forever. They'll, they'll right. produce their movies wherever they get the best tax incentives and the best tax breaks, um, wherever, you know, locations might be key. If you're Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, you want to shoot in Venice, can't, you're not going to recreate Venice on a back lot. Probably going to go to Venice as long as Venice is still there. Who knows how long that'll be. Kids, get yourselves over to Venice before it's gone. Uh, <laughs> so... Hollywood's already doing that, but I think that another layer on top of that now is going to be not just locations and tax incentives, but where is it, where can I actually get it done? So we had a story probably two months into this that said, Netflix is shooting in Iceland because Iceland is COVID free. So Netflix found a way to make a production in Iceland. Okay. Um, they're already, you know, flying people over to Europe. And I think the, Euro the European Union made exceptions for movie productions because you have to, if you're American, um, you have to quarantine for a couple of weeks right. because we have such a high infection rate. So I think they made some exception. Maybe they're going to test people when they get there. Okay. And, and if you stay on a closed set, there's some notion that, you know, you're protected because it's a closed production. Um, you know, my, my son who happens to work, uh, at a, uh, a, a voicing studio where they just started uh, voicing some animated movies for Netflix. Big top secret thing. I mean, he's like a, he's, he's just starting out and he's a runner there. So he has to like clean stuff and normally get coffee or answer phones or whatever. But, you know, he was telling me about the protocols they have there. They have the union come in, SAG, the Screen Actors Guild had to come in and inspect everything. And the lawyers are all arguing. So people are, are scared. Like people are scared of lawsuits. They're scared of getting sick. They're scared of infecting others. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to infect. You know, um, I want to say Tom Cruise, but who like whoever, right? The talent, and so there's been this very much like two steps forward, three steps back uh, approach. Not like just reality of production. Like people have put all these protocols in place, and then they'll start, and then they get scared, or somebody tests positive, and then they pull it all back. So it's, it's definitely going to be uh, a, a process. And if you could pick up and go to a country and shoot, then I'm sure Hollywood's going to choose to do that. But the question to some degree is, are they going to let Americans in? Or are you going to really have to quarantine everybody for two weeks? Production's going to be more expensive. There's just no getting around that. Okay. And so, in other words, Hollywood is just like us here in Kentucky for classes. We were talking about being in school, and then we had our numbers show, you know, go up in the state. And our governor just yesterday said, "Nope, uh, we're gonna we're gonna say encourage you to be online until September 28th, and we'll revisit. And if the numbers are better, we'll maybe get a chance to go back in school." But uh, mm -hmm. 2020 has been a unique summer. Uh, we had, you know, yeah. starting off with the coronavirus, and then uh, we had the national um, reaction to the death of George Floyd mm -hmm. uh, and the Black Lives Matter movement, which has been increasing their protests throughout the entire nation. It's not been limited to just uh, Minnesota. Um, it's all across the nation. Um, in 2015, there was a hashtag that moved around when it was hashtag uh, Oscar so white. 
mm -hmm. uh, because all the 20 acting nominees were white. I know Hollywood's been striving to improve diversity, but mm -hmm. with the Black Lives Matter movement being so prevalent in the news, is that impacting the way filmmaking is being done right now as well? Definitely <laughs> having a huge impact on the culture. And um, I mean, there have just been, uh, it, there's a lot going on this summer. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people have been moved out of jobs. Some of it is Black Lives Matter pressure. Some of it is Me Too pressure. Um, the head of uh, NBC Entertainment was just bounced uh, a week ago, Paul Telegdi, after a big expose came out about him being abusive, making homophobic remarks, uh, wasn't racist, was more sexist. Um, they launched an investigation, that was a week ago, he was bounced last Friday, last Wednesday. So that's a three-day investigation, bye-bye, Paul. There's no tolerance for that anymore. There, there are a number of companies uh, that have been making a lo lot of hires of uh, people of color. You're not seeing white men getting hired right now. That's, uh, you're seeing more women getting promoted and hired. We already had seen changes in the numbers around gender equity, which we work on a lot here at the RAP. We have a whole division called RAP Women which is also about promoting diversity and inclusion. And uh, we really, it, like we try to celebrate the, 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 the gains in that because there have been more women directors, more women screenwriters. Um, you saw, uh, you, you're, you're gonna see, I mean, I'm looking at the Emmy season right now, for example, all the Emmy nominees. Um, you know, Watchmen, which has a lot of uh, people of color in that cast, including Regina King and Louis Gossett Jr. And um, yeah, so they have a ton of nominees and it's right. the most nominated show at the Emmys. I don't think that's a coincidence. And it opens on, you know, okay. the Tulsa riots of 1921, 1920, 1921, I think it is. So that's, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think there's something in the air that there is a desire to amplify black voices in particular. There's a desire to um, both for, for optics, for the, for the, for the, the PR benefit, right. right? Of looking like you're doing the right thing. And I think there's also a, a, an authentic desire to do the right thing and to recognize that there is a terrible imbalance, certainly in, in the leadership of Hollywood that is not going to get fixed easily. I mean, it's basically white across the board. Okay. Pretty white across the board. There's a, there's a, I, I suspect there's somebody who's going to come out, um, a, a, an African-American executive who's fantastic um, over at uh, NBC Universal in, as the reorganization continues because they're totally reorganizing the company that she will come out on top. There's another uh, two older white guys were just bounced very very veteran guys bob greenblatt who was running hbo before that he ran nbc kevin riley who ran fox who was now running hbo max both got fired last week just a few days three days four days ago so there's a ton of change in the air i think that we're still of the things we're seeing greenlit it is like ava duvernay is doing a series on uh, an oral history of this or that so uh you're going to see that start to come out when things start to come out again. Okay. And um, uh, I think it's, it's very necessary change and very much for the better. And it probably won't be enough. And it'll probably take too long. But it's something that it, it is a, a good change that you're noticing. And it, Definitely. You know, although we won't see it, of course, right now, but 2021 is when we'll start seeing the results. I, I, yeah, I would think so. I would think so, yeah. That's good. Uh, last question for you, and thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, it has been a very hard year. Uh, you know, people have lost jobs. We're, we're seeing yeah. protests across the nation, as we've already talked about. But during this COVID uh, pandemic, which did put everybody at home, we, you know, there were some things like Josh Gad's reunited apart, uh, John Kavinsky's some good news, right. um, Ryan Reynolds you know, and Conan O'Brien doing Zoom bombing on people's meetings and things of that sort. 
Um, as you've looked back through this summer, uh, what is going to be your good memory of what's going on in Hollywood? What is a good memory in Hollywood for you in all of this time of darkness? Oh. Uh, well, I loved seeing the cast of Hamilton, not the Hamilton that was on Disney Plus, but seeing them on a Zoom uh, singing. I might have been with Jimmy Fallon. Is that possible? I don't know. Maybe that's right. I think I think Lin Manuel Miranda like rounded everybody up, and they they did a song that was really incredible. I think some some of the musical performances. Um, they seem to all have given up on them. They were a couple of months ago, but Fox did one. And um, I would say, you know, it was it, 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 those, those moments of like together apart that particularly the musical performances, they feel particularly poignant because they remind us of, um, you know, the beauty of art and culture when we can do it live and, and even when you can only do it through the miracle of technology, it still can touch your heart and it can still lift your spirit. So um, for me, it's probably that. Yeah, uh, if I'm thinking of the same Hamilton performance, it was, I think it was on that John Krasinski's Oh, he, it was John Krasinski. You're right. Yes, there was a little girl that was You're a right. super fan. Yes, yes, that's and it. it. Was, it was it was a very powerful, beautiful thing to witness. So yeah. So. Thank you for correcting me. Yes, that is what it was. Yeah. Um, well, Sharon, thank you for being a part of this. This has been very enlightening. I uh, I really appreciate it. I know the guys are going to be very appreciative. And, uh, well, so. great. Thank you for calling me. You're super knowledgeable about the industry. I'm very impressed from all the way out there in Kentucky. That's, 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 real, that's real insider focus, man. You, you, you totally know, you understand what is going on at this very busy time. So props to you. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us and uh, stay safe. Stay in touch. Re thank you again, Sharon, for being a part of this class. Fellas, thanks for being a part of the discussion by listening and uh, hopefully we will all be able to return to something like Cinemark here soon or whatever your favorite movie theater complex is. Uh, movies are amazing. I'm glad that you're in this class learning more about them. Hopefully again, we will be in there sometime soon watching these movies once more. As always, fellas, remain awesome, be nice, stay safe, and I will be seeing you soon. See you guys.